Hello and welcome to this video looking at redox reactions. Redox reactions occur when there is a transfer of electrons between two chemicals. The chemical which loses electrons is oxidised and the chemical which gains electrons is reduced. We can remember this using the mnemonic oil rig where we have oxidation is loss and reduction is gain. Both processes always happen together as the electrons are transferred. If you're looking to write an oxidation or reduction equation, you can look at page 12 in your data book where you'll find the electrochemical series. The electrochemical series is written as a series of reduction equations. If you're trying to combine two equations together to form a redox equation, you need to flip over the higher up equation. This will be the one that gets oxidised. For the higher course, you're expected to be able to identify oxidising and reducing agents. An oxidising agent is something which causes oxidation. In the process, oxidising agents get reduced as they've caused something else to be oxidised. That means that the other species is losing electrons, which means it must gain electrons. Reducing agents cause reduction. As they cause reduction and cause something else to gain electrons, they themselves are oxidised to produce those electrons. If you are looking for an oxidising or reducing agent, you should look on page 12 of the data book. If you're looking for a strong oxidising agent, you will find these at the bottom left. For example, fluorine. If you're looking for a strong reducing agent, you should look at the top right. For example, lithium. Here is a redox equation for the reaction between copper and silver nitrate. We need to try and find the reducing and oxidising agents. Step one is to write an ionic equation. So we would have copper plus two silver ions plus two nitrate ions to give you two silver plus a copper ion plus two nitrate ions. If you are unsure as to how to write ionic formulae, have a look at the National 5 video on ionic formulae. Step number two is to cancel any spectator ions. The spectator ions here are the nitrate ions as they do not change on either side of the arrow. So we get rid of the spectator ions. Step number three is to write half equations. So that is a reduction equation and an oxidation equation. So we're trying to split this equation back up into the two half equations that created it. If we start with the copper, we'll have copper becoming Cu2 plus and then we'll have silver ions becoming silver atoms. Step number four is to add in electrons to balance the charge. Copper has no charge on the left hand side and we have two plus charge here which means the copper must be losing two electrons. These are being transferred to the silver ions to form silver atoms. If you were to look at the two equations on page 12 in the data book, you'll find that copper is higher up on the electrochemical series than silver. That means that the copper equation gets flipped over to form the oxidation equation, whereas the silver equation stays as it is as the reduction. Finally, we want to find our oxidising and reducing agents. 
our oxidizing agent is the one which gets reduced so that is the silver ions and our reducing agent is the one that gets oxidized so that is the copper metal here are two examples for you to try pause the video now In this first example, you can skip the first and second steps as we already have an ionic equation with no spectator ions. We can go straight to step three where we try and write out the oxidation and reduction equations. If we start with the bromine, we have Br2 becoming two Br minus. And for the iodine, we have two I minus becoming I2. We now need to add electrons to balance the charge. So here we have Br2 with no charge and here we have 2 Br-. minus. This means that the bromine is gaining two electrons to break the bromine bond and form bromide ions. And it has got these electrons from the iodide. So the two iodide ions are coming together, losing two electrons to form iodine and two electrons which are transferred to the bromine. Now looking for our oxidation and reducing agents. So our oxidizing agent is the one which gets reduced. So that will be the bromine and our reducing agent will be the one which gets oxidized. That is our iodide. If you have a look at the electrochemical series, you will find that the iodide is higher up than the bromine. So this is why this equation gets flipped over. For the second example, we do need to go through all the steps. So for our ionic equation, we have magnesium plus 2H plus plus 2Cl minus to form Mg2 plus plus 2Cl minus plus hydrogen gas. We now need to cancel the spectator ions. Spectator ions here are the chloride ions. And now we need to split the equation into two. If we look at the magnesium first, we have Mg becoming Mg2+. Plus, and then we have 2H plus becoming H2. Now adding electrons to balance the charges, the magnesium is losing two electrons to become a 2 plus ion. And these are transferred to the two protons to allow them to form hydrogen. Looking at the oxidation and reducing agents, the oxidizing agent is the one which gets reduced. So that is the H plus. And your reducing agent is the one that gets oxidized. So that is the Mg. If you need to write an ion electron equation from scratch, these are the steps that you must follow. Step number one is to balance the main element. Step number two is to add water to balance any oxygen which is present. Number three is to add hydrogen ions to balance out any hydrogen atoms. And then finally, you add electrons to the same side of the H plus ions to balance any charges that are present. Let's look at a few examples. So here we have sulfite ions becoming sulfate ions. Step number one is to balance the main element. You can see that they are balanced here. We're looking at the sulfur. Step number two is to add water to balance any oxygen that's present. So we have SO3 2 minus going to SO4 2 minus. So we have one more oxygen on the right than we do on the left so we can add in water to balance that on the left so we've added an H2O. Our next step is to add hydrogen ions to balance the hydrogen atoms so we've just added in two hydrogen atoms on the left so we need to add two hydrogen ions on the right so we've got two H plus. Now we need to check the charges to see how many electrons need to be added. On this side we have negative two plus zero, so that's negative two. And on this side we have negative two plus two is zero. We need to add the electrons to the same side as the H plus ions. 
to balance the charge on this side, so we need to add two electrons. Let's look at a second example. So this example has permanganate becoming manganese ions. We need to make sure the main element is balanced, which it is in this case, we have Mn on each side. The second step is to add water to balance oxygen. So we have four oxygens, so we need to add four water molecules to the right hand side. Step number three is to add hydrogen ions to balance the hydrogen atoms. You have four times two, which is eight hydrogen atoms, which means that on this side we need eight hydrogen ions. Before you add any electrons, you need to find out what the charge is overall. So here we have 8 minus 1, which is 7, and on this side it's 2 plus. We're adding electrons to the same side as the H plus ions to try and balance to the charge over here. So if we have 7 on the left hand side and we need to bring it down to 2, we need to have 5 electrons. Here are two equations for you to try. Pause the video now. Here is our first example. So step number one, you need to make sure that your main element is balanced. As you'll see here, we have two bromines on the left and only one on the right. So we need to balance that out first by putting a two here. It's important that you do this step first, as you can see that this changes the number of oxygen atoms that we have present. We've now got six oxygen atoms which need to be balanced. So we need to add in six water molecules. To balance the, the hydrogens that we've introduced, we need to add H plus ions on the right hand side. We have six times two, which is 12. And before balancing any electrons, we need to look at the charges. We have a charge of zero on the left hand side and we currently have minus two plus 12, which is 10 on the right hand side. We need to bring this charge down to balance the charge on the left hand side. So we need to add in 10 electrons. Here is our second example. Your main element here is balanced as you only have one vanadium on each side. So you can go straight to adding water to balance the oxygen. We have three oxygens, so we need to add in three water molecules. We now need to balance the hydrogen that's been introduced here. So we have three times two. So we need to add in six H plus ions. Looking at our charges, we have a charge of two plus on the left hand side and we have six minus one on the right hand side, which is five. We need to bring our charge of five down to be the same as the left hand side. So we need to add in three electrons to bring that down to two. The final part of redox reactions that we're going to look at are redox titrations. Redox titrations are carried out in a very similar way to acid base titrations and the calculations are almost identical. In this reaction, we have reacted iodide ions with an acidified solution of potassium permanganate. We're trying to calculate the volume of permanganate that is required to be titrated with the iodide ions. The first step is to identify the information that we have in the question. So we have a volume and a concentration for the iodide ions. We have a concentration for the permanganate and we're trying to find the volume. So the first thing that we can calculate is the moles of iodide that were used. So we have moles of iodide equals concentration times volume, remembering to divide the volume by a thousand. So you have 0 0.2 times 0 0.02 to give you 4 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. So for 10 moles of iodide ions, you need 2 moles of permanganate. This means you have a 5 to 1 ratio. So to calculate our moles of permanganate, we'll divide this by 5 and that gives us a value of 
8 times 10 to the minus 4. We're now trying to find the volume of permanganate that we would need. So we'll do moles divided by concentration. So we'll have 8 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 0 0.064 to give you 0 0.0125 litres or 12.5 millilitres. Here's an example for you to try. Pause the video now. As you can see in this reaction, you have been given an oxidation and reduction equation. Before you can do your redox titration, you need to combine these two equations. You need to have a look at the electrons. You can see that in the reduction equation, we only have one electron, and in the oxidation equation, we have two. That means we need to multiply this whole equation by two before combining. Once we have two electrons, they can be cancelled. This leaves us with a redox equation of 2Fe3 plus plus SO3 2 minus plus 2H2O plus, H, plus H2O. This becomes 2Fe2 plus plus SO4 2 minus plus 2H plus ions. Now we can have a look at the information in the question and try our redox titration. So in the question we have 12.8 centimetres cubed of 0 0.12 mole per litre sulphite ions. So these are our sulphite ions here and they are oxidised by 7.68 centimetres cubed of a solution of iron 3 ions. So here are our iron 3 ions and we're trying to work out the concentration. We have two pieces of information about the sulphite ions, which means we can work out the moles. So we have 0 0.12 times 0 0.0128 to give you 1.536 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. Looking now at your mole ratio, one mole of SO32- requires two moles of Fe3+. That means we need to multiply this by two to get the moles of iron which were required in the reaction. Which is 3.072 times 10 to the minus 3. Our final step is to work out the concentration of Fe3 plus ions. So we have moles divided by volume. So 3.072 times 10 to the minus 3 divided by the volume in litres. Which gives a concentration of 0.4 moles per litre. I hope that you find this video on Redox helpful. Please remember to subscribe or follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem for regular updates of new videos.